Hey guys, today we have a mouse right in the middle here. And this means we are doing a reaction video. Alright guys, I'm Dr. Inky, your digital skin doctor and welcome to Skin Fix, the platform whereby we educate you everything about skin and today we'll be doing a reaction video. Now, not to celebrity or to influencer videos, but today we are doing a reaction video on dermatologists, derm doctors in general, especially from TikTok. So today we'll be watching five different videos and I'll walk you through the videos and explain to you what some of these derms are actually talking about. Come, let's go with the first video. The difference between purging versus breakouts can be confusing. Breakouts are typically consistent, involve all types of pimples, last a long time, and can be painful or itchy. While purging, on the other hand, is usually caused from ingredients like retinols, AHAs, and BHAs, and typically clears in less than four weeks and isn't itchy or painful. All right, so first of all, this is by an account called Derm Doctor, very famous dermatologist on TikTok, and she's explaining the difference between a breakout and purging. Now, it can get a little bit confusing between breakout and purging because it's just acne and acne and acne coming out. However, the main difference between breakout and purging, and she has already explained, is breakouts generally happen when you already have an acne-prone skin. Whereas purging happens when you try new products, especially ingredients which exfoliates the skin. Namely, AHAs like glycolic, lactic acid, salicylic acid which are BHAs, anything with um, vitamin C's, and at the same time, retinol. Now let's continue with the video because I'm seeing that she's showing us a particular cream. Well, you need to try succinic acid acne treatment to help. It reduces blemish size and oil levels, unblocks pores, and is gentle on the skin and affordable too. Now, succinic acid. Succinic acid is not a new ingredient. It's been around for many years. And yes, it does have some sort of effect on acne. However, the reason why you don't really hear much about succinic acid is because the effects are very mild. And to be honest, most people would actually not see any results when you use any succinic acid creams on your acne. Now, it does have anti-inflammatory effects and it does not cause purging unlike the HAs and the retinol. However, if you ask me, succinic acid should not even be in consideration for acne treatments. The reason why is if you do have purging due to HAs and BHAs or retinols and you still want to do something, use something for your acne, there are a lot of different things that you can actually use. Now, one of them namely is azelic acid. Now, azelic acid, again, it's not the number one ingredient that we'll use for acne. However, if you're experiencing purging and at the same time you might be pregnant or breastfeeding and you don't want to use retinol, then I would generally prescribe azelic acid. Now, azelic acid definitely has a much more better effect on active acne compared to succinic acid. So take it with a pinch of salt. This is from one dumb to, to another. I would say succinic acid, you know, you should not really try it out. There are other ingredients that you can use like azelic acid, like cinnamide, um, or other sorts of exfoliating agents like uh, polyhydroxy acid. So yeah, not a big fan of succinic acid. On to the next video. Dark circles and under eye bags. I get so many questions about this. The eyelid skin is the thinnest skin on the body and shows the earliest signs of aging. I keep my eye serum in the fridge because the cold helps to depuff. I recommend- Okay, first of all, Dr. Shah, very famous dermatologist from, from, this, from the States and huge on TikTok. And this video is about dark eye circles and puffy eye bags. Now, first of all, he's totally right. The skin under your eyes are actually one of the thinnest throughout your entire body. Hence, they are very prone to getting discoloration due to dark eye circles and as well as puffy eyes when you have excessive water retention in your body. Serum in the fridge because the cold helps to depuff. I recommend hyaluronic acid to plump the skin, caffeine to reduce puffiness, and niacinamide to brighten dark circles. All right, so um, Dr. Shah put his eye serum or eye cream into the fridge. Um, yes, it might or might not help. The cooling effect does help reduce the puffiness, but generally it's only for a short while, maybe about half an hour to an hour. Uh, it, it's not really long lasting because then what happens is your skin will then warm up the serum. 
However, in this particular um, in this particular case, he's using a serum that has hyaluronic acid, has caffeine, and niacinamide. Now, what the hyaluronic acid does is it helps hydrate the skin. Now, it doesn't really reduce the puffiness. Now, on the other hand, caffeine does help reduce puffiness because what caffeine does is it actually smoothens out the blood supply under your eyes. Thus, it helps reduce the eye puffiness, increase lymphatic drainage, and at the same time, does help a little bit with your dark eye circles. Now, niacinamide, on the other hand, also helps with discoloration, helps reduce the intensity of your hyperpigmentation, which occurs under the eyes, and niacinamide, in a way or another, does trigger more collagen, and that will in turn thicken the skin under your eyes, reducing the look of the dark eye circle. The bright and dark circles. All three of these ingredients are found in L'Oreal's new Derm Validated Eye Serum. This is what I use to wake up my tired eyes. Now, if you did notice the video, he's uh, using he's using the serum applicator directly on his eyes. Now, there is no harm. Most of the time these days, you can use the applicator directly on your eyes, but if you do not want to contaminate them, maybe you're sharing the serum with someone else, you can then put it on your finger and apply under the eyes. One of the ways that I dislike putting serum is by warming in warming it up in your palm of your hands. Two main issues. Number one, when you're doing this and you're putting the serum, what happens is most of the serum is now stuck on the skin on your palms, not really getting on your eyes or getting on your skin. Secondly, the act of warming up the serum doesn't do anything to the serum. Ladies and gentlemen, your serum is heat stable, means that if you do warm up with your hands, nothing happens. So really, you do not need to do that. You can use, do what Dr. Shah did, apply directly to under your eyes or just put it under your fingers and just do a gentle uh, application under your eyes. Are you guys suffering from dark eye circles? Let me know in the comments below what other serums or eye creams that you're using at the moment. Do you have eczema? Well, me too. And here are my three top tips for dealing with it. Now, in this video, we'll be watching about three tips about eczema. Now, the good thing is, there are a lot of derms nowadays focus a lot on skincare and skincare tips for regular skin, oily skin, or maybe dry skin, but not much tips on eczema-prone skin. So let's see what she has to share. Avoid taking long, hot showers. These feel so good, but they really dry out the skin. Yeah, first of all, hot showers. Hot showers actually do something to your skin. What it does, it, it strips away the protective layer or the protective sebum on top of your skin. Now, if you have eczema or you're eczema prone, what happens is you actually lack this particular protective layer or this protective sebum on your skin. Hence, eczema prone skin always tends to be dry. Now, you should always shower either with lukewarm water or just regular room temperature or even cold showers. That generally helps. Secondly, yes, do not shower for too long. Five or 10 minutes is probably slightly long. I would say keep it short and simple. Under five minutes, make sure you get everything done. And once you hop out of the shower, immediately you should apply your body lotion. Instead of washing with soap, use a soap substitute to help add hydration. All right, so instead of soap, use soap substitutes. Now, I think generally what she's saying is avoid things that, avoid uh, soaps or anything that has irritants or SLE. Now, SLE is a very good surfactant to remove excessive dirt and excessive sebum. But if you're eczema prone, you might want to avoid that because it can actually irritate your skin. Moisturize within five minutes of showering to damp skin to get the most out of your moisturizer. Bonus tip, keep your moisturizer in the fridge for an extra cooling effect and to reduce itch. All right, last tip is apply your moisturizer within five minutes of getting out of the shower. Now, this is really important because as you get out of the shower, your skin will start to dry up. Now, right before your skin completely dries up, if you apply your moisturizer or a lotion on your body, on your face, it actually prevents over drying of your skin. Now, however, there is a myth that a lot of people do, do wonder. Should I apply to damp skin or should I apply to dry skin? So now, actually application of your moisturizer or body lotion does not really matter if, in, if your skin is damp or your skin is dry. What is most important is how quickly you actually apply your moisturizer or your lotion, right? You need to hydrate and emulate your skin as quickly as possible the moment you get out of your shower. Now, as for the bonus tip, refrigerating your moisturizers, yeah, it's you, you can do it, definitely. 
the cooling effect really does reduce the itch on your body but other, other than that it doesn't really help your skin absorb more uh, moisturizing factors or other stuff right yeah it, your skin doesn't really work that way extra cooling effects and to reduce itch cetaphil is on point with their pro range for itchy skin the moisture lipid body wash contains moisturizing factors and niacinamide which help improve the moisture level of dry skin the moisturizing lotion is lightweight yet rich and contains ceramides which help strengthen the skin barrier. All right, Cetaphil. Worldwide, really famous, approved by most dermatologists. It does help for eczema prone skin. It does help for sensitive skin, right? When you're using for moisturizing factors for eczema prone skin, yes, do look for something with ceramide. Do look for something with niacinamide. Now, what ceramide does is immediately clogs up all the holes in your skin that is actually reducing the amount of hydration on your skin. And what niacinamide does, it actually stimulates your skin to produce more natural ceramides. Now, however, other than Cetaphil, there are plenty of other brands that do help and works for eczema-prone skin. All right, now, in this video, same doctor, we're talking about small, tiny bumps on the eyes and what are the differences between the different, different tiny bumps. Let's have a look at the video. All right, this is a pretty short video. She only speaks on about milia. Now, one of the issues with milia is they're very, very small cysts containing keratin, which is trapped under the skin. So. The main thing to actually get rid of your milia is to actually try and remove whatever's stuck under your skin. So the first one, of course, is getting manually extracted. There is a particular technique called de-roofing. D-E-R-O-O-F-I-N-G. It means you remove the roof of the milia. Now what happens is when you de-roof the milia, and once you have removed the top part of the milia, it's much easier to squeeze out the keratin plugs stuck inside the milia. Now, once you've squeezed out the keratin plugs in the milia, allow it to heal on its own, and then the milia disappears. Now, to prevent it from coming back, you should always use retinoids under the eyes, whether it's endopalin or tretinoin, or even you can use retinol, which is skincare grade vitamin A. Other than just manual extraction and retinoids, what you can also do is, if it's really, really stubborn, you can always go get it removed by laser. Now, laser, is really good for much more stubborn milia or much more deeper milias, which you cannot remove using a manual extraction. So please visit your nearest doctor or your aesthetician to get your lasers done. Milia is one of the most common issues under the eyes, small little bumps. But what other small bumps do you know other than milia that can occur under your eyes? Let me know in the comments below. If you have textured or bumpy skin, here's how I improved mine. This was actually one of my personal goals when I started a skincare routine. None of us like bumpy skin. Now, usually the issues with bumpy skin is number one, if someone's near or far, they, they'll be able to see the small bumps in your skin. And secondly, if you're wearing makeup, it is really hard to actually conceal the bumpiness. Usually, once you apply your makeup, your skin actually looks even more bumpier. And to actually get rid of that bumpiness, you actually have to apply a lot of layers of foundation and primers and your makeup just to get rid of the bumpy skin. Now, the issue with bumpy skin is usually it's clogged by excessive sebum. It means that there's excess, excess sebum being produced by your sebaceous gland or your oil gland and the sebum is now trapped under your skin. Now, if you apply a lot of makeup and do not remove it properly, it can then further clog your skin causing more bumpiness. Now, this is like a vicious cycle. I started by using a retinoid six nights a week. Then I used an exfoliating acid the other night of the week. Any exfoliating acid will do. I've personally been loving lactic acid. Fine. All right, so step number one, always use a retinoid, whether it's adapalin or tretinoin. It does not matter, apply it every day, right? Use it on a daily basis because retinoids, Yes, it does help, but it takes time, sometimes two weeks, sometimes up to two months to see any visible result. Now, that is just to reduce the amount of oil. It doesn't actually get rid of the sebum that is already being produced and it's already trapped under the skin. So the second step, what Dr. Shah did mention, is to exfoliate your skin. Now, you can exfoliate once to twice a week using exfoliating agents, which are a little bit strong, 
Uh, generally, there are AHAs or BHAs. AHAs like lactic acid, mandelic acid, glycolic acid, or you can use salicylic acid. Finally, patience is key. It took me at least three months to see improvement. Now, the last one is really important. Patience is key. I've always gotten a lot of inquiries from patients and users and saying, Doctor, we have followed your advice. I've followed so many people's advice and I've used retinoids and I've exfoliated my skin for the past two weeks, but the bumps are still there. Yes, it does take a long time, even sometimes up to half a year to see visible results. So the main thing about this to get rid of the bumpiness is to be as patient as possible. Now, however, if let's say your bumpiness doesn't go away after half a year, please go visit your doctor because you might require some oral medication. All right, guys, that's the end of our video. If you like more videos like this, whereby we react to other people's TikTok or YouTube videos, please let us know in the comments below what other video you would like me to comment or react to. And that's it for me. I'm Dr. Inky, your digital skin doctor. And remember to subscribe to our channel, turn on the bell button, and like this video. Please forward it to your family or friends if you think you'll benefit them. And until next time, stay safe, stay healthy, and most importantly, stay informed. Are you tired of wasting time and money on your skin, but nothing works? We are here to help. SkinFix is a platform that provides personal care education completely free. SkinFix is run by skin doctors and skincare experts. You can chat and consult with our skin doctors without ever leaving your home. Other than free advice, SkinFix also provides tailor-made solutions for your skin problem with customized medical-grade skincare delivered right to your doorstep. SkinFix, your digital skin doctor.